It's a hot one today and a noisy one. I have a neighbor over there pumping out their septic system or something like that. I hope you've been enjoying the spring. I have a book recommendation for you. It's called Bug Music, How Insects Gave Us Rhythm and Noise by David Rothenberg. The author's known for organizing musical ensembles to make their way to places where insects are singing and then composing music to play along with them. There's a chapter of about 50 pages dedicated to the music of cicadas. I really enjoyed Rothenberg's positive attitude towards cicadas and the sounds they make. Apparently, colonial scientists in the early United States were skeptical that modern cicadas were even related to the ancient Greek cicadas, simply because they perceived them as being too noisy to have been appreciated by somebody like Homer, who compared the song of the cicadas to that of the people who sang his poems. Rothenberg disagrees and gives this appreciation. He writes, I still believe people like the sound of all this white noise in the forest. It is like begging to listen to the call of the ocean in a conch shell, or the repeating peal of waves on the shore, or even the pleasing flow of traffic on the highway below the city window. We have long appreciated the washes of pitchless rhythms crashing in from this noisy world, and now more than ever we can praise the musical value of noise as never so much loved before. Think of it, Homer actually loved this noisy sound of the cicada, as it is clamorous and whirring all over the world, never a pure or calm cricket-esque tone. The bard loved noise, a rhythmic noise, a wash of sound that could confound his beats. Inside all that noise, he must have heard the potential for beauty, as a wash of sound contains all perceptible sounds, as a solid block of marble contains all sculptures that could be honed out of it. I also have to grudgingly admit that this book refutes the idea that prime number cycles are an evolutionary strategy to avoid predators. Apparently that's a popular idea, but there's little evidence for it. The chapter does contain some interesting theories on why cicadas come out in prime number years, complete with fun prime number rhythm diagrams taking place over hundreds of years. Guys, you need to, you need to go back inside, guys. I'm, I'm filming here. You don't know where what is, bud? It goes in this quarter bag. Oh. Okay. I got, I got I don't know where it is, buddy. I got these. Seems like the lawn crew has arrived next door. I don't mind the noise, but it might make it hard for you to tell what I'm saying, so let's find somewhere else to talk. Okay, where were we? Ah, yes. <clears throat> I haven't finished this book yet, but I can already tell I'm going to be enthralled throughout. Bug Music by David Rothenberg. Pick it up at your local library. So if you watched that other cicada video that we made, you got to hear some patching based on that discredited idea of prime number cycles being a predator avoidance tactic. But I bet you were wondering, what about the sound of cicadas? I do hope to gather some field recordings of cicadas while they're at their peak this year, and we'll definitely do some work with those. In the meantime, let's work on some synthesizer sounds that are inspired by them. Back in 2004, the last time the 17-year Brood X emerged, I was working a summer job in northern Michigan, outside of their zone of emergence. But I remember hearing a radio interview with somebody in the zone, and the background noise where they stood coming in over the phone, then transmitted through the radio into small radio speakers in the kitchen where I was working, sounded almost like a fleet of alien spaceships to me. I've gotten similar vibes from the music created by certain artists in experimental tape studios in the 20th century. In particular, things that have been done by Elian Radig and Jaap Vink with tape delay feedback and ring modulation. I'd like to try to make some, let's say, cicada-inspired sounds in this manner. We'll focus more on evocation than on accuracy, so it should be scientifically beyond reproach. 
Let's give it a whirl. First thing we'll do is... Hey, Walker. Uh, yeah. They need you downstairs on production. Okay, I need to go to the production floor. Uh, I'll be back. So for this patch, the first thing we'll do is set up a feedback loop. But instead of just a simple loop, we'll run it through several stages where we can alter its amplitude. We'll take channel two out from the Modi mix and patch it through the echo phone. We'll take the echo phone's output through the channel of Optimix. And we'll molt this Optimix channel Patch one copies through the herb verb and take the herb verb back to channel one of the mod mix. We'll monitor the channel one output of the mod mix. And because this output is normal to the channel two input, this will complete our feedback loop. This is basically an unaltered feedback loop, but with echo and reverb inserted. The next step is going to be to rein it in slightly by taking this malted copy of the Optimix channel and patching it to damp. This lets the feedback rein itself in a bit. When it gets louder, the damping increases and it quiets down. When it gets quieter, the damping decreases, and so it will attain a sort of point of equilibrium. If you're interested, we did another video on no input feedback a while back. The sound we hear is not generated by any sound source. It's born from silence contemplating itself. There is no true silence, of course, so I guess what we're hearing really is the environment contemplating itself and then imagining and creating itself. But I'd like to make it sound more like chirping. So the next thing we're going to do is ring modulate the feedback. We'll take a high frequency sine wave to the mod demix channel 2 input. This ring modulation happens to each successive echo, so on one pass it ring modulates, then we hear an echo via the echo phone of that ring modulated pass. At that point the echo is ring modulated again. We're monitoring from channel 1, which is just before the ring modulation happens. So we're hearing only the previous ring mod at any given time. These echoes build up to create a chorus. I also like to add a low frequency but still fast element to this to make it maybe a little more discernible as individual chirps. Let's slow the oscillator down. Still fast but not audio rate.
Let's patch in a slow maths channel to modulate the tilt parameter on the herb verb. Also slightly modulating the frequency of this LFO. We can add back in that high frequency ring modulation as well using the maths. I've got uh, channel 4 cycling at audio rate here and let's take the sum output with a little offset from channel 3 so that it always uh, stays open a little bit and use that to ring modulate on channel 1. Does this patch accurately mimic cicadas? No, not really. Does it accurately represent cicadas heard over the phone, transmitted through a radio, filtered through 17 years of memory? I also don't know. Probably not accurately. No, not accurately, but I'm not sure accurately really exists in this case. Next time, let's listen to the cicadas themselves and see what we hear. Until then, happy patching.